Hey everybody, so uh, I'm here at the beautiful hut on Orizaba. Uh, weather rolled in, we weren't able to summit, and so now we're kind of waiting for our ride to come pick us up. And uh, I wanted to talk about a subject that I've been meaning to talk about for a while, which is climbing with two ropes on your harness. Uh, you probably see this in many different situations. Uh, usually this is commonly done with half ropes or twin ropes, which I'll explain, I'll go into detail on those. But it's not uncommon nowadays in certain formats like ice climbing or maybe a hard technical alpine route or some big walling where you would use two skinny single, uh, single rated ropes. And so the idea with climbing with two ropes, the big advantage is uh, if you need to bail or if the repels are more than you know, 45, 50 meters, then you have the two ropes to repel with. And so that's when you see a lot of people climbing with two ropes. Uh, there are other methods of climbing with two ropes where, like, if in a party of two you have one person tied into one rope leading the pitch and then the bottom person is following the pitch just trailing the other rope, like in a mock leading situation. But that's not really ideal because it just gets in the way of everyone and then that bottom rope can get snagged on rock real easy, uh, especially when it's not clipped into any sort of points of protection. And so, uh, having thinner ropes that are either half or twin rated would be really advantageous for a number of these objectives. The only problem is when you have two ropes on your harness, it can be hard to sort of keep them organized and eventually, you know, they will form some form of twist, but a lot of times those twists are false twists, which are just, they aren't real twists, but they just look a lot like twists, which is, it's kind of a funny situation. And so, uh, in this situation, I'm just using the same rope for this. We only have one rope up here. And so one side's one end of the rope and the other side's another end of the rope. Uh, when I tie in to both ropes, I try to keep both ropes on either side of my belay loop. So I kind of use the belay loop as the separation point. And then another thing you want to watch out for is there's no twisting when you turn facing the rock. And so a lot of times when you flake the rope, you want to flake the rope in one pile, like your blue rope one pile, green rope the other pile on the side. And then that way you can keep them separated at the very start. And you also have to be uh, understanding that when you tie in, you want the ropes to be facing, or uh, you don't want a twist to happen when I turn around. You see how both these ropes twist right here as I turn around? So that means I didn't tie in properly. I would have to untie this knot and then put it on the other side of my belay loop. And so that's uh, another thing is if you watch out, if you're very diligent at the start and you don't have any twists, then you're going to keep your rope systems very uh, neat. Uh, here's my little uh, example, the ladder right here, of climbing. Uh, when I, the ropes that I generally twin or tie both onto my harness are Sterling uh, Fusion Photons, which are seven, eight uh, ropes that are written as both twin and half rope. And so what that does is it gives me the option to either clip one uh, rope into one protection and then clip another rope into another piece of protection. Because half ropes are rated to catch falls. And so that usually works out best if I have a really wandery pitch, like if I have one piece right there and I climb up and I have another piece right here, you can see how that would create a lot of rope drag, but with two ropes, you lessen the rope drag. Um, a lot of times, however, on the routes that I generally climb, when I have two ropes, I just act like they're twin ropes. And so I clip them in to the same piece every time. It does take a little bit of practice to be able to clip two ropes into a carabiner. It's nice to have big, wide carabiners, but uh, pretty much anything works once you get the hang of it. And um, I find that on the routes that I do, generally the protection is either in a straight line or sparse when I have twin ropes. And so in that case, I can just clip them together and use them as if they were twin ropes. Twin ropes themselves are not uh, actually rated to catch falls. And so you need to clip, uh, sorry, not on their own rated to catch falls. So you need to clip both of them into a carabiner. And those are the ropes that you find that are really thin. All right, so when you're actually uh, ready to belay with these ropes. In first, well, I'm going to talk about belaying the leader. Uh, what I like to do is with my ATC, 
I set it up so that way I always can clip it onto my belay loop. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to have both ropes coming out from each side of my belay loop, and I'm going to put the same side of the rope into my ATC. So if I have yellow rope on the left side of my belay loop, it's going on the left side of the ATC. And if I have a green rope on the right side of my belay loop, it's going in the right side of my ATC. And that kind of helps with managing the, uh, the twist, the twisting aspect to make sure that it, uh, you don't really incorporate a twist or you don't push a twist to either one side of the rope, either the leader side or, the, or your side. And so that's just a nice way to keep things uh, Nice. Uh, so that's just a nice way to keep things simple. When I'm at the station right here, uh, this is my anchor. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is clip myself in, and we always do that with the clove hitch. When you have a single, or I've even seen this with uh, half, uh, twin ropes, but if you have single or half rated ropes, you do have the option of clipping one rope in. And Woo, windy day. <laughs> and then that would hold you just fine. But the problem is that kind of adds, that kind of makes the ropes a little bit offset from each other. And uh, if you have a lot of experience dealing with these ropes, that's really not a problem. If you really just want to do clove hitch on one strand, you have the option of clove hitching one strand and then just clipping the rope in the other strand. And that helps align the ropes and use up virtually the same amount of material. Another option, if you really wanted to, is you could clove hitch separately with both strands, and that has other advantages too, particularly if you're going to do a transition with, uh, with your friends. If you're climbing in a party of three, it's not uncommon to have one person tied into two ends, and so this could help you out in the future. Uh, but what I do, if I'm climbing with two, like in a party of two, uh, and I have two ropes, is I just grab both of them, and then just do one monster clove hitch with both strands. And I'll lock that and I can size it to whatever length I want. And then here, I can go off belay and start stacking my rope. Here it's kind of not worth trying to keep them all nice beyond the actual stack on yourself. Once I get to my climbers, I can pull out my ATC or whatever device I'm using. A lot of times I'll actually use a, I think a Giga Jewel, but with fatter ropes it's nice to use a GG too. All right, either way you load up whatever device you have. And then now, uh, same deal as before, just letting the ropes move to, uh, I'm putting the ropes through both sides of the ATC and I can check make sure that's actually going to work. And then as I belay, same with belaying from uh, below. I'm going to just pull both ropes and then bring my climber up. So essentially what I do, a lot of times if I, if I can do it, is I try, to teach, um, I try to treat both ropes like one rope. That's kind of my trick to keep things simple, uh, especially when you're a party of two, there's kind of no need uh, to, to treat both ropes like they're separate ropes. It keeps the system a whole lot simpler if you just act like they're one rope, but just in two parts.